<laughs> uh, and the whole message for this whole art piece is go back to the creator's heart. The thing is, up here, you get a chance to kind of see what it was like before modern day religion, modern day business, modern day life. And it's going to show how we can take care of the humans and animals and the plants and they'll be able to take care of us because we're going to set a tone up here that is kind of an example of a glimpse of Eden. I keep walking on these streets just to find and find my mind. I can barely breathe, babe. I've been so blind. With a picture of your face, will always be so kind. I always will remember I'm falling into line. But it was just a dream. So it seems that it would never end. Oh, and then I uh, want to grab my leashes real quick. I got it, Dad. I got it. Grab a leash. These dogs are actually not our dogs. And I'll tell you. They're just dogs from people around here that, that they still have camps here, but they just live here. Oh, I see. Oh, they just adopted us. Doggy daycare. See, somebody just jumped this fence one time, the dog got him right on the other side. But so then I put this up, it's like Jesus is corner. Uh, oh, wow, yeah, ground. it is. Basically, we're going to farm this whole area up here. It's going to be, it's gonna be um, food. All this is going to be in, like, it's like, I have a huge track in the back. You'll, you'll see in here, it's like, yeah, bud, just give me a second. And we're going to slowly build that out as a little help community right here for this area who wants to be involved with the gardens and stuff like that. And right here are these tanks are going to be support for massive pyramids. You'll see the small, you see the small ones over the fence here, but uh, they're going to be a big, a big version of what's, what's I'm going to show you on the inside. Let me check. How you doing, hon? Ready? Yeah, I put the dogs away. Oh, ready. Okay, come on. Come on in, all. Very right, cool. Yeah. These little guys. Yeah. Hello. Hi, nice hey, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm yeah. six seven Kevin. Hi, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> thank Hi, thank you for inviting us in here. Yes, Pleasure. Dev. All right, come on in. And uh, we do lock the doors on the way in, uh, primarily because we have a baby and you oh, know, yeah. kind of like Makes keeping sense. it tight and stuff like that. And we really don't. Just so you know, I have not done a tour like this. Uh, People just don't come up here. This is like a private kind of thing we do, just a family. But the thing is, is that the artwork, as you see behind you, this the, the pyramid and the kind of the blanket between the two, and this is where the massive pyramid is going to go, right behind us here. Oh, that's it's, so cool. So, yeah, come on around. You got a great view of the place here, too. Oh, absolutely. Here, stand up here. You can see. Yeah, see this little so slab cool. city over here. And then the, behind that is the Chocolate Mountains, which is the bombing range. That's why there's no development out there. And then, um, and that goes all around you here. And it's really nice right behind you because there's nothing behind you. But you can see off in the distance here, see how green it is out there, like pasture-wise? And uh, that someday will, will be up here. It'll look, it'll look just like that. What are you going to grow around here? Well, I mean, you grow you all kinds of food. And down there they grow, you know, like kale and they grow lettuce and they grow alfalfa. And you can grow basically anything. You just have to have the right climates. Now, again, we can't grow everything here. Like it gets hot during the summer and stuff like that. But inside these tanks right here, what we're going to create is a, they're going to be biodomes. And so we're going to have climate controlled environments in there. So we'll be able to basically grow anything. So that'd wow. be inside these tanks, yeah. Oh, you can do like biodomes. That's interesting. Yeah, so it's gonna wow. be biodome first. So if you come on over here, it shows you kind of the design of it here. So see how it kind of uh, the pyramid over the dome right there as far. Oh, is that like the uh, concept for it? That's the concept. That's the concept of what this is gonna be up there, you know, as far as. Up there. And um, we have we don't have it all set up yet. We're not really ready for like a, a big introduction, but there's gonna be aquaponics here. So this this. So behind you, like you have fishing and stuff like that. And so we're gonna grow food and show it as a demonstration, stuff like that for people. I could take you through here. Let me take you over here and show you our beautiful meal. This is actually. Oh, this looks so good. I come, can already come, tell. On, come on in. Come on in. <laughs> I love wow. you guys. So yeah, we're having burritos. Oh, sorry to bother you. Guys. Yeah, all good. Teacher's a little afraid of the camera <laughs> or <laughs> protective of the camera. So, here, Derek, you want to take a bite to eat in the camera? Enjoy yeah. it. We already you say describe the meal for us. What are you eating? Yes, um, so we're having chipotle bean burgers uh, cut up uh, on top of a tortilla 
with beans and chipotle mayo. This is vegan chipotle mayo and um, tomatoes, onions, and lettuce. You <laughs> too, relax, okay, cameras are okay, buddy. Besides the fact that Eden was the perfect place, this concept of a diet can actually really have good impact on how long we live and how, how healthy we really are. Yeah. So, from just from a nutritional perspective. Absolutely. Is it hard to source some of the ingredients for this? No, it isn't. I mean, we're only 15 minutes away from like a Walmart. Oh, want to see what I'm filming? Who's your damn mom? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll uh, take one of these, buy these awesome burritos before I. Oh, also, um, the science of the Bible, the people who had the Eden diet uh, lived the longest in the Bible. As I become more and more understanding and compassionate, um, God shows me that um, if we change to be more like the principles that God held in Eden, we become a different being. I'll take you over to the next stop over here okay. and then we'll, we'll, we'll come back. And but that's, uh, that's our tractor right there that God has given oh, wow. us for the journey. So I already have now a, a tower to go up there and I have the actually side rails for the for the pyramids. So wow. that's actually expanding. We'll expand around the tank and then we're gonna go up. Wow. 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 This is so cool. <laughs> These poles right here is a 60 foot long shade structure that's gonna actually combine the tanks. On that on that model there, see how the, the, the pyramids are combined with the black the black um, um, screen cloth over there? Yeah. That we already have the structure right there to, that's going to combine the two tanks, and then we, we, we have the enough to do this pyramid, and we're going to eventually do that. One. Yeah, we'll be able to grow all the way through between the tanks. This is another Eden. Oh yeah, we're creating a, an experience. God has shown me that if we can, if He can show it and we can dream it, we can create it. Did you throw apple cider vinegar in there? What's the? Oh, this is actually sun tea. I used to actually, out in Babylon, I used to have a coffee business kiosk, you know, the espresso and all that. And I used to drink a lot of coffee, loved it, you know, and before it's the rest. But the thing I realized is that um, coffee, again, when it's brewed hot, it becomes acidic. And so I actually oh, yeah, started hurting my stomach acidic, yeah. and, and stuff like that, where uh, sun brewed tea is, is less acidic, but it has still has lots of caffeine. I love how you say my when I was in Babylon. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's <laughs> actually great. a term. It's a very biblical in a it way is, too. Yeah. And the cities, the concept of cities, stuff like that. But in here in Slab City, they actually use it a lot too. Uh, the huh? differentiate they, that's Babylon, and this is Slab City. Yeah. And Isaiah talks a lot about how cities um, are gonna coll completely collapse. All cities. He says the destruction of cities and. Because um, the cities were basically invented by Cain, so um, and Cain killed his brother. It was the first murder in the Bible. So uh, city actually means um, 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 uh, with walls, mm -hmm. and with walls means you have protection because you have enemies. Yeah, and so that was the concept of the first city. It's because create walls, it's separatism type thing, and now we have cities and governments and all this stuff, and they're really separate entities in a way, right? Yeah. But they still, like in our United States, have the federal government, but then they have these cities which have all their different laws and stuff like that. It's okay if you don't. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hi. So this truck over here is the truck I came in in the town with. And um, uh, and I carried that pyramid right there with me. So, uh, so I came to the town, and so when they set the five guys to attack me, you can see the car, the, 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 it's still, the windshield still. Can you see the windshield over here? How it's, uh, looks like bullet holes in it. Yeah. But actually what they did, they had metal pipes and they were, they were hitting on the wind. They were like, get out of here, get out of here. Do you ever worry of people still coming for you or? No, not at all. They actually, everything has changed dramatically. I mean, so what happened during that time period is they threw out a lot of slander and a lot of, you know, weird stuff. So people may have still thought processes of, oh, I'm not sure if I trust the guy or not. But the thing is, we don't have any problems up here. And as I said, God provided these dogs as, you know, kind of like safety. And it, it's an amazing experience because a lot of thieves are afraid of dogs. This dog, these two right here are actually from the camp down below, which was, uh, it's called the pawn shop, and they got in trouble with the police, so they went to jail, so we've been taking care of these dogs for the last four months. Uh, this is Savage, and that's uh, Fierce. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. This was their guard dog. So these guys have very bad reputation. Oh dear. They're, they this one's known. This one has, maybe has taken off a finger. I don't I have no yeah, idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but again, this is the three year old and, and basically and this dog actually fell in love with us and, and actually carried I'll show you here in a minute. We have five puppies here. Carried these five puppies from that camp down below here. Hank carried them all up here twice. I took them down there back there. I said, no, she Mom. brought them up here because she knew that no, we would take care mommy. of them. And, um, and again, God knew God I had that mommy. part of this bedroom experience. Hey, so we went from, um, you know, us kind of, uh, to being the, the primary thing. And now we have, we're taking care of 12 dogs right now. They did punch the tank. They were trying to burn me out. So what they did is they punched the tank and they put a, um, like a, a stick in there as a fuse. And the thing is, is that this is diesel. Diesel doesn't burn like that, so it didn't work. And they, they weren't smart enough to think about that. But so you see back here, it kind of goes with the same thing. That's the, that's the puppies in there, that's five puppies. And then we have another cage here and they have another cage here. And uh, again, God's amazing. This stuff is all came to us basically free or used and, and, and just when we need it. So you know, it's kind of happened. And, used to to and then later on in life, um, I got in a skiing accident, and then God showed me that there was a recipe in the Bible of anointing oil, and um, there's a word in there called calamus, and again, again, um, some translate that could have been uh, cannabis, and um, there's a cannabis holy anointing oil available out there, and I actually put that on my back, and it amazingly healed me. And so again, I don't put any emphasis on the actual ingredients per se, but it was actually the, uh, I think it was more about, you know, if you, if you anoint something and, and God can use anything to, to be used that way. And, and in essence, it is it's been used for, to medically help me, but also connect with people. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I, a lot of people smoke pot and do a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. So I can say, hey, let's uh, focus on getting healed. And we can focus just keeping that one thing. And yeah. then eventually maybe get rid of that one thing. But again, that's in God's timing. But the cannabis has shown me to be a very helpful tool. Okay. And and as far as mushrooms, mushrooms are not legally out here, so I don't really have a perspective on it per se because it's still illegal. But I think there could be some uh, medical value there. So we ended up um, we took mushrooms together, and it took away all that strife, all that fear, all that whatever it was that was holding us, like paralyzing us, mm -hmm. and we felt like that that everything was in, on a good change. Even sometimes um, we get so stuck into the Babylon thinking. Or, yeah, or, yeah. Somebody mentioned earlier that we're yeah. uh, what was it hard. Hard hearted. Hard hearted. But sometimes um, maybe something like that can be used to break you out of that you know, for a moment. Yeah. You know, you'd be able to see it differently and like, whoa, I experienced it and now I'm okay to experience it again, but I don't even need the mushrooms. And I even heard like Greg Laurie and stuff like that. And again, I'm not a proponent for LSD at all, but he did LSD and found Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, a bad, bad, bad trip brought him to Jesus. That. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, again, I think God can use anything for good, but the thing is, is that um, humans can also do the, what they've done to the earth is, you know, destroy it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go through this way. I'm going to take you guys to this way. You guys have gone to this far, but let's go farther in. Okay. Um, hi, buddy. I can't open it. Um, this right here, I'm not going to open right now, but it, this is considered our nursery. And so this is actually last, last season we actually grew a little bit in here. And so that was where we'd do the small ones, and then we'd bring them out here. And this whole thing is basically a greenhouse That's that we're, we're going to walk into. Wow! Oh, a little pool right here. This right here is our um, water. You know, uh, as, our, as far as having water systems, and actually we're going to we're going to build a shower here, and we have of course a, a tub right there. That's a jacuzzi tub, and it's just not all hooked up yet. We have a washer, but it's just not hooked up yet. These items, uh, we're slowly getting them all put it together and put into place and stuff like that. But as you come through, it's been hard to push it together and deal with the storms and stuff like that. But it's all coming together. See, you like, you see some of the shades down and stuff like that. It's storm. So we got a nice pool for summer. So this is our kitchen here. Um, just a kind of a fun little kitchen, community kitchen type thing. This is kind of a big table that we can have uh, bigger meals. Yeah, nice kitchen setup. Yeah, I mean, again, we need it out there a lot, most of the time, but if we ever have a, more of a formal group or something like that, Hey, let me show you. Let's turn. Oh, hey, Tuffle. So... <laughs> yeah, get in there, dude. <laughs> caught you. It caught you, buddy. Uh, right behind you, um, just to flip around completely. This mm. actually is the soup for the soup kitchen today. So this is a, um, a huge pot that we have uh, as a keg, and of course, if you look in here. If you look in here, you'll see a whole bunch of uh, 
hearty vegetable soup that will be for our oh, soup. Oh, that today. smells good. Well, as they come, come around in here, I'm just gonna show you, you can just get shots of it in here. But again, I, I'll, um, this is kind of a communal area. And then on the other side over there is basically like, kind of like a fitness, like we work out, have a gym and stuff like that over there. That's more life. And this would be more love to kind of communal setting here. Nice. And so in this, uh, not being presentable, but this trailer right here, mm -hmm. this is actually some artwork. Check this out, it's an interesting artwork. And when I got attacked, after I got attacked, I was I came in and set this whole thing up. But as you can see, there's a shotgun shell, a uh, shotgun shooting through it this way. And again, if they want to attack me again, they'd have even bigger problems. That was kind of the message that I had for them. Pretty much all our food here is organic and stuff like That's that. Awesome. So it's just a little bit healthier. You may not have as much of, you know, it doesn't have poison in it for sure. So. Come on around over here, this area over here, and I can show you. Um, but just tuck under the screen here, so you see there's some workout stuff there, but then you can... <laughs> And so we have, uh, again, trapeze type stuff that we can have people do. But when the screen, when we get pull it out, there'll be lots of room here, and we'll be able to do lots of stuff. But we've got a 20 foot high pyramid here that we can do um, silks. We have silks and we have we have all kinds of stuff to play around with. So again, it's fun for him right now, but it actually is built for adults. And so th this is actually gonna be a, um, an area that people can do, um, let's say life regenerative stuff. Can you describe the, the why the design in specific? Why yes, I'll, I'll even tell you how it, how it all happened. Um, these poles um, were brought to us by a guy when we had the community, New Eden, okay? He was a very deep spiritual guy. He was actually, um, came from Jewish roots, and then he became um, a, a Messianic Jew later on in life. And so he was brought to our community, felt led to come there. And when he came there, he came there with these poles. There was, um, nine poles okay and they were built to build a merkaba you know what that is it's in jewish mysticism uh, don't don't hit the guys please um and it basically is a time travel device okay and there's two pyramids that lay inside each other and spin somehow and then supposed to be able to teleport to different time zones or whatever it's it's called a merkaba anyhow so this was um god left these in my in my care when the gentleman died and so he died and he it was interesting how it happened he said he didn't need to leave the community for a while so he was gone for a couple of weeks and, and he was walking on the beach and just died so he felt like I, I guess he had to you know go out to do that or something like that but when he left him for me then um i always had a different place and then god said it felt i felt like i was saying turn them into pyramids and so i i basically put eye hooks on all three of them and all of them and made it into three pyramids but god said they want to be three-sided pyramids to to really put the focus on the the trinity um you know the father son and holy spirit the thing is is that pyramids if you study pyramids pyramids bring a lot of energy like i said you go put that thing up in a park it's gonna bring people together right so this is gonna give us a chance to bring people together and talk about the Holy Spirit and the Creator's heart and different things like that. And again, this isn't stuff that I thought of. This is God. But again, God has supplied them basically everything around me for free, or He's supplied the money for it for free, and then I bring, I get the supplies. And again, again, God's doing it. Um, I'm just the one that's uh, willing to step into it. And again, my parents don't understand it. Okay, they actually live in a mindset that they will not even want to come out here and visit. Yeah, and it's really because that they have, um, you know, again, how do they feel about homeless people? They don't like, them. you know, they moved away from California because of all the problems with the homeless and everything else. So they come from an old, different mindset, okay? But they, they, in their mind, they're very strong Christians. But are they willing to get out there and really help with the, the, the tough stuff? Like, you know, like I've been doing for the last 14 years, living with basically the people and trying to help as, as much as you can. But or or they're living on their lake house and and you know on the east coast. Well, that's the life they choose. But again, they don't understand what we're doing out here, and they they didn't understand when I was actually living in a vehicle, hanging around homeless people. They didn't understand that life either. They thought, in a way, like have you ever heard of Saint Francis of Assisi? Yeah. Saint Francis of Assisi had an awakening moment, and then his parents thought he was going crazy. My parents didn't think I was going crazy, but they thought that I, something was going 
weird. And so they didn't they didn't understand it because you know their their understanding of how to do Christian life is you go and have a very successful Christ, uh, job and then you do what you can you know to help the ministry or whatever. And to me, what God has shown me is to step out and be walk the steps more like Jesus. They don't understand that. And then when I do that, God has blessed me. I mean, it, mm. it's amazing to you know that how everything has come together. Yeah. Well, look at who Jesus hung out with was the tax collectors and sinners. Right. You know, you're supposed to put yourselves in the midst of those people. Right. It seems. Think about this way. Okay, so um, there was the, the, the example of the fishermen. They went out fishing, right? And then the next verse is actually they, they left the fish and became fishers of men. Okay? So they no longer were going to have to fish. They're going to go along and do this other ministry thing. Well, think about it. Saul was a, I mean, Paul was a, his name was Saul before that. And he was a persecutor of Christians. Okay? So he's no longer going to be doing that. He's doing something new. And then you got, uh, what was it? Matthew was a, um, a tax collector. Well, again, he, he changed from his old job and became a minister. And so, again, it shows many examples of them doing it. But that's not the really message that we get today is for us to do that ourselves, mm. as, as, as becoming walk like he walked. Ja, ja. Sam, I'm so sorry. No problem. No problem. He's, he's, it's a good video. <laughs> <laughs> so you, your parents, they, they've never visited. They won't visit me. They said they won't visit me. And actually, um, we've come to a point right now because I'm so frustrated at them for, for having that kind of approach and that mindset is that um, we, I've, I've said you can come, come and visit me or let's not communicate. Because if you're not here um, and not um, really emotionally supporting me, every time I talk to them, it's like a drain. Because they don't want me here. They want me to you know, be coming there and everything else. <laughs> And again, this is a life that we, I, I'm dedicated to 10 years here. God, I, 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 I'm, this is a 10 year project and, and then I, whatever God has for me next. We are not looking, Devin and I and Elijah are not looking to kind of make this our home. This is a, this is a project for God and it's going to be a, an amazing experience for people to go through. But the thing is, is that, you know, a lot of people look at it as a me project. You know, like, oh, it's you, T, it's you doing it. And I, I keep trying to explain to them. I, if it, if it was me choosing it, the guy that lived out there in Babylon, I wouldn't be here. Do you understand? I wouldn't be in this environment because this is kind of a toxic environment at times. You know, people, you know, screaming and yelling and shooting guns and stuff like that. I've had an Uzi pulled on me out on me here. I've had I had knives pulled on me. And again, these people are doing it out of their brokenness. Do you understand? And so I and God protects me. God has never had an opportunity, but I also am known as a very, very um, a protected person put it that way i have animals but also i've you know god has uh, amazingly gave me the right kept my rights and everything together so i can i can legally hold guns and again i don't want to use guns ever but again if these people or some people want to threaten me or my family then i think that judgment would come to them do you do you believe uh we've been talking about spiritual warfare in our documentaries what do you, what are your thoughts on spiritual warfare and Maybe. do you have do you feel like you have basically angels supporting you um okay so i do believe in spiritual warfare and i do believe in angels supporting you i believe that you have an angel supporting you too and again um spiritual warfare uh comes in all different ways and again it's and sometimes it you, i can feel it as like energy and then my wife and i would get into an argument or something wouldn't you know trying to keep me away from doing ministry and that and it happens all the time here it's very strong because i i know there's people that are Let's say um, down there that don't understand what's going on. They're maybe putting the not best energy out there toward us. And so it could be demonic. Hey, Dev. Dev. Can you please grab Elijah? He is all over. <laughs> My wife actually, um, she deals with that a lot too. Because so if they can get to her, they can get to me. And so she gets attacked a lot and she's really been working on Dev, can you please take him? And, and I am, I am. So spiritual warfare is big time here. Um, so it really feels like it's a heavy weight and um, it's every day, uh, my, like my wife, um, what she has to do, and, and I, I pretty much stay in constant communication with God now in my life. I mean, I've done so much in the Bible time that um, I just actually really spend time with meditation and really just spending time with God. Where my wife, 
wife is still um, a newer Christian, or, and she's in the phase where she wakes up in the morning and she gets thoughts or whatever of, of like maybe spiritual attack. So she gets into the Word right away, and then she puts on music and stuff like that. <sighs> clears it all. And so, you know, again, it's, it's, a, it's a, like a, a routine that we build and build like a strength, like muscling, like bodybuilding. And then in, once you get to a point where you've taken the Bible and you put it into your heart, then you take that knowledge and then you go and live it. And again, I think a lot of the, a lot of the people I've seen on the journey that I'm on is they're still living in the Bible, trying to, like the most churches, teach the Bible, not really live the Bible. And this is obviously a huge problem with uh, the religions out there today. W would you want to say something about that, of how the current church churches are approaching? Well, um, I had my experience at the God. God brought me to a mega church. It's actually a, not just a mega church, but it's actually a church that's known by other churches as kind of an example uh, of how to do modern day mega church. And um, what I was shown is that um, they're not doing Jesus. They're doing a version that they think the Bible holds. And again, Jesus is very clear in his example of how to do life. He once was a carpenter, and then actually when God got a hold of him, and he did his 30 years old, did a transformation, he had three years and full-time ministry. And again, doesn't talk about him doing being a carpenter, doesn't talk about you know the other disciples going back to their old jobs. You know, even with, uh, they talk about um, one of them being, uh, they built tents. Well, again, if you're on the road, this is like a big tent, okay? So I can understand that they were maybe tent makers because they needed that for to, to travel around with or whatever. But I think what God does is He wants us to use all of our gifts and talents, but not to serve money anymore, the system, but to serve God completely, wholeheartedly. And once you step into that realm, you don't have to worry about money anymore. What do you say to people that are stuck in that programming of the world? Uh, step out. Step out of the boat. And again, you, you'll never know until you step out and 100% trust God completely. And God has amazing journeys for all of us. But again, I was stuck at a job at one point in time for a dollar and ev like everybody else. And then even in ministry, when I worked in the church, it was for a, I, were, I sold my hours for a dollar. Okay, even though I said I was working for God. And, and again, working for God, you can do God's work every day, all day. Okay, it doesn't have to be here at a church, it doesn't have to be any certain place. But what happens is, is that when we're tied to a job and tied to the dollar, that controls our time, that controls our space, that controls the where we're gonna be. And that doesn't have, it's not really how the Holy Spirit works. The Holy Spirit says, I need you to go over there and you have a job, you can't. So you can't really be led all the time by the Holy Spirit because you're stuck by into this job. And then it's, it becomes a God because money is that most of their money and most of their time and most of their uh, energy and time is focused on money. And again, I had to step away from that and I, and I think everybody should. And if you would have caught me uh, just maybe a few months ago, I would be shaved up just like you. And again, I, I'm in my transition into being a more natural being. And actually, it's very interesting. First time I ever grew a beard was um, in 2012 when I stepped out and got, um, I, it was a most amazing experience because the more natural I went, the more I could feel God's voice. I can't tell you, but this takes off some of the, see, you touch this and you feel, okay? And again, God's voice is a, uh, it's an internal thing, but it's more like a, you sense it. And again, um, God speaks to a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. Experience is a lot of way how God speaks to us. And some people even say maybe an audible voice and even in come in, in, in person. But the thing is, how God speaks to me, it's like my intuition, but it's tuning in to making sure that everything comes through my intuition is aligned with the Bible. Mm, amen to that. Some Samson stuff with the hair, that's funny. Yeah, did oh, you, interesting, right. Did you have um, any fear when you took that step? What was the feelings for you when you first made that step? Very, I mean, just like everybody else, it would be very difficult because you've learned how to uh, um, go through survival in that world. You learn about going to get a job, and this is how you do it, and everything else. When you step away from that, there is a lot of fear, like how are you going to get, really get taken care of? Especially with me, because when I stepped out, I actually had... Um, of a different diet. And when I step out with a different diet, it, a lot of people think it's more expensive, it's this, it's that, you can't do it for whatever reason. And I, I tell you, I was able to be as strict as I am now and, and navigate through, but I had more personal power over my decisions. Mm. And where I, I said, I'm not gonna eat meat and I don't. 
how would you describe this way of living? Um, I would say it's going more to natural. How God would really want us to live. That when I when I switch not just from um, being a Christian, modern day biblical Christian and to a more conscious Christian and uh, that was a big change because then it, I was starting to God was starting to reveal to me how God views things and God how God does cre care about the animals and it was way more than I did as a human does that make sense because mm -hmm. I was detached because of the culture I lived in yeah. and because you know now we're in, we're in grace basically that we can eat meat but again it also has scripture in the Bible that says um, um, all things are uh, available, but not all things are beneficial. Okay, all things are permissible, but all things are not beneficial. And again, that's talking directly about meat eating. And again, we can do it, but is it the best for us? And I say it's not today because I've done the research and everything else. Every time you eat um, something, meat, death, anything, it turns into acidic. Okay, it's called decomposition. Okay, and so that's why they kill it and they put it in the freezers so it doesn't really go through decomposition yet, but it automatically becomes acidic right away. And our bodies do not run well in acidic environments. So the more acidic stuff we eat, the more that does break down our immune system and more we get sick. Cancer comes from acidic environments. Do you think that all the people in Slab City have the love in their heart like it was originally intended it for to be here? No, um, no, what happened was is that, um, so the, uh, this concept of Babylon has, and has become here as well. Originally it was a, a free camping space for people to come and just kind of get away. And then it became, you know, people living here and people owning and trying to control areas and stuff like that. And, and now people are doing full blown businesses down there. And again, that, that concept uh, divides us. Because again, they're kind of in competition, but also they're still starting to do community and stuff like that, where it doesn't give to the um, the pure nature of like let's let's do it um, and just really love each other through the process. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So so it's still very much um, um, a product of Babylon, and that's why in the soup kitchen you'll see tonight when we go down there is that uh, I have the serpent on top of the soup kitchen because that's in Babylon. It's showing that the, the serpent does roam around, and you see it when I paint the soup kitchen. It says the S has a serpent as well, and and what that's showing to me is that the serpent is around. And again, although we are even doing a soup kitchen and everything else, but all around us are people with different thoughts that actually could be thinking good or not so good. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, but then uh, the progression between down the mountain and being up here, uh, being up here, we're uh, trying to make this a completely different experience. Yeah. Oh, I've been harassed a lot by police. Are you going down to the soup kitchen as well? I'm not. Oh, okay. No. Well, if I don't see you, it was great yes, to meet you. it was great to meet you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for letting you us. Said six come seven on. Kevin, right? Six seven Kevin, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting us into your home. It was a pleasure. Yes. Yes. Thank yes. You. Enjoy. Have a great night. Thank you. Such a good vibe. Oh, Thank you. you as well. Sweet. Thank you. We'll see you guys in a little bit. Down All right. Down. We'll see you guys. All right. Nice to meet you. you. Take care. Bye. Bye.